Hey, we're going to have a lot of fun this afternoon, guys. I can promise you that. Style. <laughs> Everybody say style. Style. You better believe it, boo-boo. <laughs> Here we have style posters. And on the poster, it says, Hiwi the Kiwi, fish for the future. Now, hey, kids, when I say fish for the future, this is what I mean. I've got a serious problem. You see, there's not as many fish swimming out there in the ocean as there used to be. And if we're not very careful, and if we don't start using our brain and think about what we do if we ever go fishing, there won't be any fish left for anybody to catch. And that would be awful. So fishing for the future is what this show's about. And if I see some kids who are showing you got heaps and heaps of style, everybody say style. style. I might give you a style poster. Everybody go, wow, baby. Who likes to go fishing? Oh yeah, baby. Hey, well I tell you what, kids, we are gonna do a lot of laughing this afternoon. I can promise you that. But at the same time, we're gonna learn some very important lessons about one, fishing for the future. Two, saving our seabirds, because New Zealand's got a real problem. We're losing lots of beautiful seabirds. And three, keeping ourselves safe when we go fishing, especially if we ever go fishing on a boat. But we need to warm you up first with a song I wrote called the Pukeko Weko song. Everybody doing the dance. Looking good. Well, there's a new bird. I found him up the back of my farm. Red leg as long as my arm I sneaked up I hid behind a remu tree But then who can go I saw him looking back at me Oh, he looks good But oh, well, he lifted His right leg up in the air Then he splashed down with a stomp and a swamp over there He said, oh, hey baby Would you like to join me in my show? Cause we're doing, doing, doing The poo echo 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 Oh, look at the teachers go, awesome Hey, what I want you to do, kids I want you to write a story about the show today and about the lessons and messages that you're going to hear today about fishing for the future, saving our seabirds, or water safety. So you're going to have to pay attention during the show to find out what those messages are. You write your story, and whoever writes the best story at your school is going to win this. Yeah, baby. This is a very special Hiwi the Kiwi fishing rod. So special, you don't need any hook, line, sinker, or bait. All you do is wave it over the water three times, one. No bites, oh, I got a bite. Oh, I caught a tiddler. And three giant snapper will jump straight into your boat. Who believes me? Are you crazy? I'll show you something else. See this magazine? New Zealand Fishing News is coming into your library every month for the next 12 months. Good reading in here if you're into fishing, but in every magazine, kids, there's a very special page. There it is there, the Hiwi the Kiwi Goes Fishing page, where the best stories written at the schools I visit are published. So there's a photo of a girl who won a fishing rod at a school. I'm going to get a photo of whoever writes the best story with their new fishing rod and a copy of their story, and it's going to go into this magazine so people all around New Zealand will be able to read your work. I guess that means you'll be kind of famous. Who wants to win that fishing rod? Well, remember what I said, kids. Hey, if you want to win it, you're going to have to put two of the lessons that you learned today into your story to prove to your teachers that you've been paying attention. Kai moana, food from the sea. 
No, I'll sing it first and you sing it. Kai Moana, food from the sea. Yeah, food from the sea, do big waves like the sea. Kai Moana to feed the family. <coughs> Rub your tummy like you want to feed a fish and chips. Fish for the future, pretend you won the Hiwi the Kiwi fishing rod. You're casting it out and you're reeling in a giant snapper. Kai Moana for you and me. And when you go me, pretend you're a dolphin. Put a fin on top of your head. Wouldn't it be great if we all go fishing with the guys? Catch a snapper for the cooler, but don't forget the ruler to check if the snapper's undersized. Kai Moana, food from the sea. Kai Moana, to feed the family. Fish for the future, and there will always be more. Kai Moana, for you and me. Cause if the snapper is too wee, it will never grow to be a mummy or a daddy who can breed. We'll be sure to let him go, so he's got a chance to grow. We can always catch his uncle for a feed. Kai Moana, food from the sea. Kai Moana, to feed the family. Fish for the future, and there will always be more. Kai Moana, for you. So right at the start of the song, I said I want to catch a snapper for the cooler, but don't forget the what? Oh. Come up, boo-boo. Hey, why do you think we need to take a ruler? What for? So we can measure how long the fish is. Give him a clap. <laughs> Help me out here, Angus. You hold the end of one ruler, I hold the end of the other. End of it, what am I talking about? This is the sort of ruler we take with us fishing. And check it out there, Angus. All the types of fish you can catch is kingfish, cod, snapper, trevally, up here crayfish. And underneath each fish, there's a measurement which shows how long the fish is allowed to be if you catch one want to take it home. So Angus, if you caught a snapper, the red one up in the corner there, it says here it's got to be 30 centimetres long. So put your finger where 30 is here. Hold the ruler. Hold the ruler there. Good boy. So if Angus catches a snapper, You've got to put it against the ruler, head here, and tail here. And if it's shorter than that, what has he got to do? Call it out. <laughs> no, you don't throw it back. It's just a baby. It's not a cricket ball. <laughs> we don't get the baby snap and say, sorry, boo-boo, but you're way too short for me. Bye-bye. <laughs> no, it's just a baby. You wouldn't do that to your baby brother, would you? <laughs> I can't believe some of the kids are going, yep, that's what I do. <laughs> hey kids, let me tell you something special. You know what? Our show is all about teaching kids to teach adults stuff that adults don't know. <laughs> yeah. So we want you to go home tonight and teach mum and dad, uncle and auntie, granddad, whoever you can find, some of the stuff you're going to learn today because I promise you they won't know. You can teach them something for a change. This is the first thing I want you to teach them. You say, Mum, Dad, if you ever catch a saltwater fish like a snapper, what you should do, you should pick him up with a wet towel. It's got to be a wet towel because if you pick a fish up with a wet towel, none of his scales will come off and you won't hurt him. I'll tell you something else about fish that adults don't know. All fish have got a protective coating on their skin. It's a bit like sunscreen lotion. So you can imagine in the summer, if you were out there on a hot day and you had sunscreen lotion on and you rubbed some of it off your arm there, you would get sunburnt where you rubbed it off. It's the same with fish. If you pick a fish up with your fingers, you rub some of that coating off their skin. If you put them back in the water like that, they can get sick and die. So it's important that you remember and teach adults. Always pick a fish up with a... 
and that's not going to happen, okay? I've got one here, Angus. I caught him eight weeks ago. Is he smelly? Turn around so the kids can see you. Is he smelly? You sure? It smells like what? It smells like cardboard. <laughs> You're right, it's fake. <coughs> I must have caught him in a lake for goodness sake. You could bake a fish cake, are you awake? <laughs> yes. Hey Angus, you want to kiss this fish? <laughs> kiss the fish, Angus. But listen, if Angus caught this fish, how many of you think it's big enough for him to take home? Put your hand up if you think he's big enough. How many of you think he's too small? Wow. There's only one way to find out, and that's to measure him. Now, kids, you've got to teach adults. When you measure a fish, doesn't matter what sort of fish it is, you've got to measure from where the tail meets in the middle here. Not from here. Not from here. No, no from the middle of his tail to his nose. We'll put him against the ruler, Angus. If you caught this fish, can you take him home, Angus? No. What? No. You sure? Yes. He's a clever boy, give him a clap. Yeah, because this snapper is 28 centimeters long. He's too small. You've got to put him back in the water and give him a chance to get bigger. Well done, my man. Grab yourself a poster. Give him another big clap. But we've also got to put the really big ones back. Now, if I caught a really big snapper like that, why do you think I want to put the big one back? Why? Amy, why have we got to put the big ones back? Um, so it could, if it's a female, it could spawn more fish? Spawn more fish. Give her a clap. Yeah, because Amy is right, because you see, if it was a big mummy fish, it might have eggs or babies in its tummy. If you take that big fish home, you're taking the babies home. They never have a chance to be born, they never have a chance to grow, and Amy never has a chance to catch them and eat them later. So you put the big mummy fish and the big daddy fish back in the water, because they are the fish, remember for your story, they are the fish that are going to make babies for kids to catch in the future. So if Nathan was on a boat going out to sea to go fishing and all of a sudden the boat hit a whale, put a big hole in the whale and the whale sinks, blub, 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 blub. <laughs> no, the whale put a hole in the boat and the boat sinks and Nathan falls in the water with his life jacket on. What does he do? Call it out. <laughs> Floaty like a cork. He start bobbing up and down. Bob up and down, Nathan. <laughs> Keep bobbing, boo-boo. It's rough out there. Long, slow bobs. Now, Nathan. While you're bobbing, you're starting to feel sick, so your eyes start to roll in your head. <laughs> Listen to me, kids. You must never, ever, ever go on a boat, a kayak, a dinghy, a yacht, a jet ski, or anything towed behind a boat, unless you're wearing a... And here's something I want you to teach dad or uncle or granddad, kids. If you ever go on a boat and dad says, put on your life jacket, and dad's not wearing one, I want you to teach dad a lesson. I want you to say, dad, I don't want to be cheeky, but I'm worried about you. And I learned at the Hiwi the Kiwi fishing show that you should never go on a boat without wearing a life jacket. And I want to catch fish. You know, Birds are the greatest fish finders on earth. I know if I look at my binoculars and I find lots of birds, I know that there's lots of birds there because right underneath them in the ocean, there's lots of fish. But here's the problem. When I get out there, I put my fishing rod, my fishing lines in the water, the birds can see and smell the bait. They come diving out of the sky and they can eat your bait, but they don't realize there's a hook inside and you can catch a bird and not a fish. And this is a really serious problem, kids, because there's lots and lots of seabirds dying in New Zealand 
and we're going to talk about it and we're going to fix the problem. There's a couple of things we could do. We could make our baits sink quicker in the water so the birds can't reach them. We could keep the boat tidy and clean so the birds can't smell the bait. Or if there's birds hanging around the boat, we could have a bucket of water, throw the water at them. <laughs> you won't hurt them, but you'll scare them away. So I've written a song about this and it's called SOS Save Our Seabirds. I said it would be a good idea to throw a bucket of water at the birds. I don't think it is such a good idea because when you think about it, a bucket of water is quite heavy. It'd be hard to reach the birds, eh? I've got a better idea. How many of you have got one of these things? Yeah, baby. The super duper super soaker master blaster water thing. Hey. Next time you go on a boat, or if Dad goes on a boat, tell him to take a water blaster with him. Because if the birds are hanging around the boat, shoot them. But with water, you're not going to hurt them. We don't want to hurt them. You, hurt, you shoot water at them to scare them away so that they don't die. This is a good idea, eh? Right. Isn't he beautiful? Kids, I'll tell you what, one of these birds washed up on a beach in Auckland. And because there's hardly any of them left, the scientists wanted to know why it had died. So they opened up the bird, and inside its tummy, they found the blue plastic top of a milk bottle. You see, kids... When that bird was flying over the ocean and looked down, if it sees plastic in the water, it doesn't matter if it's blue or pink or orange, it doesn't matter, it thinks it's fish. 
and the bird dives down, and before it realises it's not food, it swallows it. And once it gets into its tummy, no other food can get through, and the bird dies. We gotta stop it, kids. I want more and more black petrol, not fewer and fewer. We gotta put rubbish where it belongs, in the rubbish tin. And listen, kids, if you ever go down to the beach, take a bag with you, and if you find any plastic, pick it up, put it in the bag so the birds can't reach it, okay? Look, there's 300 kids here, okay? If every one of us managed to save just one bird, then all of us together would save 300 of them. That's fantastic. Will you help me do that? All right, that's enough teaching for one day. Are you ready? Are you sure? Go, what about go? I wonder if I could bake a slate of pie. Wash it down with beetle juice and bread and a butter of pie. I'll have a snail or two to a caterpillar stew. Grub in a bunk and a slimy slug to finish off the brew. All right, we're looking for the best one. I just ate a slater from my refrigerator. Slater tastes greater with your tea, you'll see. When you've been spinning, I get stuck between your teeth. Let's create a slater recipe. I just ate a slater from my refrigerator. Slater tastes greater with your lunch. Skin cinnamon, why I eat tomato sauce. Lock your ears so you don't hear the crunch. Here's your opportunity, I'm looking for style. Are you ready? Well, you better get your guitars out. 